Good evening and welcome to Clearly College Park Business and Industrial Development Authority meeting on this Thursday, January the 14th, 2021. Uh, I will now call the meeting to order at 6.34 p.m. We will have roll call at this time. I am Eleanor Cornelius, Chair Lady. I am Demetrius Taylor, Vice Chair. Jamel McKenzie, Secretary Treasurer. Aaron Paxton Arnold, still by the. Leslie Zinn, by the member. Bianca Motley Broom, Mayor. Denise Cole, Interim Executive Director, GICC Gateway Center Arena. Dan Lee, the attorney for Bida. Arlie Jones, Executive Director for Clearly College Park. Derek Taylor, Mayor Pro Tem. Tasha Hall Garrison, Assistant Secretary Treasurer for Clearly College Park and Economic Development Program Manager. Ken Allen, Councilman Ward 3. Hello, I am Mercedes Miller, the Interim City Manager for the phenomenal city of College Park. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Nikki Washington, I'm with the City Planning Department. This is Renee Copley, Main Street Manager for the City of College Park. <laughs> okay, is that everybody? Again, welcome and Happy New Year. At this time, we will have review and approval of the minutes. And, uh, I'm looking at line 34 of our minutes and Tasha, we have Mayor Pro Tem Clay, but I believe that should have been my name. Okay. Any other corrections? Yes, um, Jamil McKenzie, uh, line 82. It says letter to businesses, um, Chair Cornelius wrote letter appreciation when it should be read, letter of appreciation. Any other correction? So may I have a motion to approve these minutes with those two corrections? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carry. All right. Addition, deletion, amendments, or changes to the agenda. I have two changes to the agenda. For new business, a nomination of slate buyer officers 2021. We will table that for our February meeting. And we will place item A with an update on brokerage real estate service from Ackerman and Company regarding Six West Development. May I have a motion to approve those two items? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposes? Motion carried. Thank you very much. So at this time, we will hear from Steve Langford. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, Steve. All right. So, uh, I'm going to uh, share my screen here, and um, I guess we can uh, we can get started. Great, very happy to be here. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, City Council, uh, Biden members, and all others in, in attendance. My name is uh, Steve Langford, Senior Vice President with Ackerman and Company. Uh, by by way of a, a refresher. Uh, I'm the uh, 
primary point of contact. Uh, uh, Ackerman acts as the exclusive broker for the city of College Park, uh, BIDA, uh, in reference to the Six West development. And um, personally, I have uh, over 20 years combined finance and commercial real estate uh, experience. Uh, Ackerman and company has been, uh, they're based in Atlanta and they've been uh, around for over 50 years. So there's a tremendous amount of experience there. Uh, one of the claim to fame is that we are small enough to provide very customized uh, service, but we're large enough, uh, or we're, we're, we're well endowed enough to be able to compete with the larger firms. And we've been affiliated with the uh, Six West slash Airport City Project uh, for over the uh, for over three and a half years. So we're extremely uh, uh, knowledgeable and, and very intimately uh, familiar with with this with this project. And my goal is to provide you kind of a, uh, an update and to, from a broker's perspective as to where we are with the project. Great. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'd like to talk about a few milestones, uh, but to put that in a proper perspective, one of the things I'd like to do is provide just some, a real basic overview of some background information. When uh, this project, uh, at the time that it was introduced to the, the public back in the spring of 2018 uh, at a BizNow event, uh, it, was, it was called Airport City at that point in time. It was received with a tremendous excitement and, and anticipation. Uh, and in fact, uh, we had received over uh, upwards of uh, actual written offers for, to purchase property within the development. Uh, in excess of 50, 50 million dollars. Uh, but despite this widespread anticipation and, 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 and acceptance and excitement for this project, uh, there were uh, a number in the commercial real estate sector that questioned whether or not the, the city, whether it would ever come to fruition, uh, whether the city was committed to uh, providing the infrastructure necessary to make this a reality. Uh, and there were some who thought that even rolling it out at that time, probably uh, that the city was putting the cart be before the horse. Uh, I'm happy to be sp speaking to you today to say that the city has resp responded in a resounding way uh, by saying, yes, you are committed to, to this project. And the market has in fact uh, taken, taken note of it. In fact, even during this pandemic, it didn't stop the city from moving forward with demonstrating its commitment to this project. And I am convinced that the city will be rewarded once it fully comes to fruition. So that leads me to my first slide and that is the uh, development milestones. And it's broken into two sections. The first is the, the, the infrastructure. Uh, just to highlight some key components that has brought this project to where it is today. Uh, the city, uh, there was you know, a few bumps along the way, but the city uh, decided it would move forward and it would commission a uh, master plan, its own master plan that will allow it to have the full control of actually what went into the plan. Uh, it initiated uh, the acquisition of privately owned properties that were actually within the boundaries of the project. Uh, and some of the heavy lifting uh, ironically actually took place during the pandemic and that was completing the, um, uh, the rezoning of the entire project for to a planned development zone status, which afforded, which allows for a more streamlined uh, process uh, for entitlements for developers who will be developing within this project. Also, the uh, DRI study was completed and, and approved, which is actually monumental uh, for developments that are 50 plus acres, uh, this, the, the state needs to understand its impact on the surrounding areas. Uh, the entire project have been surveyed. Uh, the jet fuel lines uh, at the entrance of the project have been, been lowered. And all of these are key infrastructure components that has been completed, okay. of which the city should feel uh, proud to be quite honest with you. But they all lay the foundation for what is to come. And uh, it certainly didn't happen overnight. It took a little time. Uh, the second section that I'd like to make reference to is from a marketing standpoint of the project. Uh, very excited, some things that were done here. Uh, the first one was that there was community outreach. And, uh, and in fact, it was probably the, the first Zoom call that I actually 
uh, had the opportunity to sit on where there were more than 100 people that were, were actually tuned in uh, to the actual call. And that just represents a tremendous amount of excitement uh, and anticipation for this, for this project. And there were some who not only were there to learn more about the project, but there was a number from the community that was excited about giving their, their input on the project. And not only did they give their input on the project, but their input was in fact utilized to actually refine the plan that the, that the city had. So uh, now the community can feel real good about their, actual, their voices actually being heard. In addition, the project was rebranded, uh, rebranded from Airport City to Six West. Six West, a, a name that actually has meaning that represents uh, 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 paying homage to the city's past, but also looking forward, forward to the future. And to couple that with the very iconic uh, uh, logo to, to accompany that. Uh, again, all of this just moves forward in positioning this project for uh, realizing its ultimate vision. Uh, as a result of the, uh, the rebranding, uh, uh, our marketing department was able to work with the uh, work with Tasha and the communications staff uh, with the city of College Park in, in uh, being able to develop promotional material and developing a digital presence. Um, in fact, uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is that we were able to launch the uh, Six West uh, website uh, that allows individuals to be able to go and look at the, all things that, that are Six West. Uh, back in October, uh, we were able to launch the, uh, actually do the, uh, the groundbreaking for the project, which, ba which, ba which basically signaled to the public, we're ready to move forward with realizing this vision. Um, and then from a marketing standpoint, one of the, the, the strategic uh, avenues that we uh, targeted, uh, that we put in place was to have a targeted uh, end user uh, uh, um, list that we would actually look to reach out to that would complement the vision for, 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 this, for this specific project. Uh, and so the great thing about that is um, there's going to be a lot of interest in this project. And the reality is, is that not everyone is going to necessarily be able to fit into this project based upon the vision uh, for the project. Uh, uh, the good news is that we're looking to, de to uh, deploy things, uh, some options for them, but we want to make certain that this vision uh, that the city has in commission for this master plan, that it's as close to this master plan as, as possible. So we're, we're working very diligently and we've established some strong relationships with some potential end users. Mm -hmm. The end users are largely waiting for the infrastructure um, certain aspects of the infrastructure be put in place. So uh, we're really excited about that coming to fruition in the near future. So let's uh, transition now into, uh, from a transactional standpoint as to where we are with the project. Uh, the mm -hmm. items one through seven on this list represents uh, either contracts that have actually uh, been secured that, are, that were currently under contract for parcel sales within the project or that have actually closed. What's noteworthy about these seven is that uh, of the seven, three of them were actually signed during this past year, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Again, another indication of the anticipation for this project coming to fruition. The uh, items eight through 11 uh, represent individuals who are, for the most part, uh, they're more uh, either high profile or uh, the, the parcel, their parcel purchases will be in excess of a million dollars. And those are the ones that we have uh, had extensive uh, dialogue with that we fully anticipate those conversations transitioning into uh, a letter of intent. In fact, the first uh, two on their eight and nine, we anticipate having something uh, perhaps from them by the end of this, uh, by the end of this month. Uh, and the other ones, those are, are to be determined because they're kind of waiting to see how the project moves, moves forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next slide references uh, the phasing process. When we started out, whenever you embark upon a project of this nature, you start out with an idea of what you think will, will happen. Uh, the good news is, is that as you go along, it's important to be able to modify it based upon real-time activity and what's taking place in the marketplace. And so this actually represents uh, where we are, and quite honestly, phase one now represents 2021. And the items that you see listed there uh, under phase one, the vast, 
majority of those were actually from the previous slide are the ones that we actually have on the contract. So we fully, and when I talk about phasing, not necessarily projects being completed, but basically projects being started. In other words, groundbreaking. We fully anticipate that the items that you, that you see on this slide represents those that will, that should be breaking ground this year. Uh, based upon the contract and uh, the anticipated infrastructure being put in place in time that will allow uh, certain due diligence uh, periods to, to have expired. Um, it's also worth noting, if you look to the right, uh, you see phase two and phase three. Phase two, we anticipate during years two and three, we anticipate the second hotel coming online. Uh, we anticipate more office uh, activity coming to the area, more retail, and, um, and the incremental district we actually anticipate uh, uh, actually being sold out uh, by year three. And that's again, based upon demand uh, that we've already seen for the area so far. Phase three, we're, we're estimating that between four and six, again, additional office, additional retail, the third hotel site, and then also uh, the kind of introduction of some of the public amenities within, within the development. So the development will be far enough long and mature where some of those items could in fact uh, come to pass. Uh, these are what we feel are reasonable and somewhat conservative. And, uh, and, and depending on how things go during this first year, there's a very good possibility that the uh, phase two and three timelines could in fact be accelerated. Uh, but we, we didn't want to, um, to be overly uh, optimistic with, with providing the estimates for the, this phasing process. We wanted to provide something that was, that was reasonable based upon tangible information. Um, <clears throat> it's also worth noting that how the, this project has impacted the area. Uh, even without having one building come out of the ground yet, just the announcement and the anticipation for this project has really impacted this area. Uh, if you look to the far left, that's an advertisement that another brokerage firm used in marketing a property on Main Street. In fact, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Enterprise Building. Um, and they actually reference, uh, you see it highlighted there in black, the, um, they refer to it as the, uh, the, the Airport City, City Project. Uh, and it should be work, it should be noted that this project actually sold uh, back in uh, fourth quarter 2020. Um, the article on the far right is uh, a press release for an investor that purchased uh, a set of apartments in the city of College Park uh, that they're doing uh, renovations to. And, uh, and so this represents their perception of the city of College Park. Uh, here they reference the, the, the College Park area is Atlanta's fastest growing submarket, and we have a lot of conviction investing in the rapidly growing submarket of College Park. So they view the College Park area as, as, as one of the uh, Metro Atlanta areas fastest growing, and they have strong conviction about their ability to purchase here and to, and to do business. And if I could draw your attention to the center here, this is noteworthy from the standpoint that uh, this was a uh, part of a, uh, a market uh, update um, by CoStar, which is a, a commercial real estate information provider of subscription service, and they print quarterly updates on various markets, and, and they even reference this project as well. And, and CoStar is not only distributed or, or used throughout the U.S., but they also have operations in Canada uh, as well in terms of tracking uh, commercial real estate properties. Uh, you know, they reference that, you know, there's a renewed focus on the Airtropolis vision shared by many local advocates, and this could provide momentum for the market to reinvent itself, particularly with the mixed use Six West project. Now, that's pretty significant because as, as others are looking at various markets and they're looking at kind of what are the catalysts for driving activity in that area, Six West is leading the way in terms of its reference and, and its potential catalytic position uh, in the market. And to further illustrate the project's impact on the area, um, it's impacting both the residential and the commercial real estate aspects uh, of the market. If you look to the, to the left, you see uh, from 2017 to 2020, you can see how 
property values within the College Park area have continuously increased. And what is truly noteworthy is that during 2020, uh, you actually see a, a steeper increase in uh, property values than uh, in the uh, uh, trend prior. Now, all of that isn't contributed to Six West. Some of it's just basic supply and demand. However, what is happening is that uh, Six West is a contributor uh, of that. We receive calls from individuals who wanting to know when the residential is going to be starting because they'd like to be there. Um, uh, unfortunately, you know, we explain to them that it's a process and we give them estimate timelines of when it's coming online. Uh, and some of them are moving forward. We're trying to position themselves to be in the market so that when it comes to pass that they will be able to have access to it. From a commercial standpoint, if I could draw your attention to the right side of the screen, and more specifically here, this represents uh, the year 2020. Uh, and the activity and is broken off in the quarters. You see the year start, well, in 19, you see that there was robust activity tapered off by the fourth quarter, which is year end. And that's very common in commercial real estate. Fourth quarter is a slow period, uh, but you see almost record breaking sales activity for the city of, uh, or this particular market that the College Park is in. And even during the pandemic, you would think there'd be some fall off and it was, but it wasn't as significant. Those numbers were moving very closely to what took place in 2019. And all this is during a pandemic. And if you look here to the right, you'll see years 2021 through 2023, activity is projected to continue to increase. So there's this upward trend that the city of College Park will be able to continue to contribute to. And the realization of the Six West project will only Will only add to that. <clears throat> um, final final thoughts. Um, from a brokerage perspective, uh, fourth quarter is typically a so, slow period of time. Uh, we we had groundbreaking in October, so we we're actually going to a kind of a relatively slow period. Uh, the, I don't think the vac vaccine had been founded by that point in time, but a lot of things have happened since that time. Uh, the presidential election, uh, the, the fourth quarter, end of year, vaccine discovery, and just the, the year 2020 just being over. So uh, commercial real estate investors and developers were looking forward to 2021. Uh, and as a result, there's widespread optimism because you've got, we've got the discovery of the vaccine and the disbursement is taking place. Uh, the groundbreaking has been completed and significant infrastructure has already been put in place and continues to be put in place. So we anticipate and we project that uh, 2021, the city of College Park and Biden will be able to begin to, to really see some of the fruits of its labor up until this point and the investments that it's made in this project up until this point. And we, are, we can't thank the city and uh, the city council and Vida and the staff and all those involved in bringing it to this to this fruition because it will be catalytic in in, in ways that we even can't uh, discuss right now. We're we're just extremely proud and thrilled to be partnering with the city and bringing this vision to, to reality. Uh, that concludes, I guess, my my summation and my overview uh, of the project. Um, I welcome any questions that anyone may have about the project or what was just shared. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Langford. Um, board members, do you have any questions or concerns? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks to you. We are <laughs> gonna buckle up and take the ride. <laughs> it's gonna be enjoyable, I assure you. Thank you. Okay. Have a thank great you. evening. You too. Okay, GICC update. Hi, good afternoon. Or Hello. Um, the GICC is actually closed through April, but we are opening up this weekend, the arena and the GICC. We were fortunate to get a cheerleading competition that relocated from the Georgia World Congress Center. The event is probably going to bring over this weekend over $200,000 plus, and then we're expecting half of that for next weekend. So again, they're utilizing the GICC and the Gateway Center Arena for this weekend and next weekend. And we are also still talking with the Atlanta Dream. They have submitted their schedule to the league and they're looking to start their season in May. They're not sure if they will start with spectators or without spectators. All right, is that it, Denise? That's all I have. 
All right. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes, I have a question too. Uh, Ms. Cole, could you just outline the precautions that the GICC is taking in light of this event that's that's occurring this weekend? And I know that there were some some questions about that. Yes, ma'am. We are following all the safety protocols that have been set in place, um, the hand sanitizers, the stickers on the floor. So we're following all the safety protocols. Also, as far as social distancing, making sure we're staying within the six feet and also staying in compliance with the governor's executive order. I have a question. Why did it relocate from the World Congress Center? Um, the client was concerned that the Georgia World Congress Center had a COVID hospital and they did not feel comfortable being in the, even though it was in a different building from the hospital, they did not feel comfortable being in the Congress Center. Any other questions? Thank you, Denise. Thank you. All right, uh, economic development reports. Good evening, everyone. And we'll start, I believe, with the Main Street report. There we go. With Main Street and Virginia Avenue. For the month of December, we had um, one new business license um, distributed. That was to Johnny's Chicken and Waffles. They'll be located at 3725 Main Street. They're currently in training process. Um, I talked to the general manager on today. They may have a soft opening as early as this Saturday or um Monday, if um, the holiday, um, if they don't get the last little kinks worked out before um, Saturday, but they're looking to do a soft opening. And so to kind of keep down on the crowds and then we will plan a, a ribbon cutting in the very near future for them. And then also I wanted to make everyone aware of um, Tom, Dick and Hanks is back open, um, located on Main Street, as well as Manchester Arms on Virginia Avenue. And just to remind everybody to support our small businesses. And so I included this slide um, as I thought back while I was preparing these slides about 2020, we had a couple of small minor bumps in the road, but in light of COVID happening, we had some um, stores closed, people lost jobs. We still in the city of College Park had much to be grateful for. We had many um, new businesses open. We had um, a very successful um, socially distanced art and music event. Um, we had um, several businesses come together and make a, a message of hope. Um, we just had a lot of positive things going on. And so I just wanted to include this to remind everyone that in light of whatever we're going through, there's still that light, ray of light, and we just have to hold on to that hope. And then lastly, um, we had our CPMSA monthly board meeting on yesterday and our next one will be February the 10th, at, um, 2021 at 3 p.m. And that will be virtually still. And then also there is an event called Poetically Correct. It will be an additional poetry night held at the auditorium on February 20th. And that is the end of my report. Thank you, Renee. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. I believe Tasha is next. Yes. All righty, so thank you. During the month of December, we had eight new businesses to the South Side Corridor. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to provide an update for the board as far as um, on December 30th, um, Economic Development, or I work with um, Building and Inspections as well as Code Enforcement. Um, as far as to close the discount mall due to it um, not following accordance to city policies. Um, we are now, um, today there was an inspection and we are working with the ownership to bring things up to accord and get things back into compliance. As far as um, information is provided to the mayor and council and the board would come from our city manager. So um, I'll provide her the information and she'll disseminate what is necessary. Um, as far as for the second item, 5025, we also met with the ownership on December the 30th to discuss the blight of the property. 
Um, and that also is the same. Um, there is going to be a focus on blight within the old national area. Um, and that's something that we're working with code enforcement for. So you will be getting more updates um, as that progresses. Any questions? Tasha, okay. uh, would you be able to name our winners for the businesses? Can you just do that? I have that coming up next on the next slide. Okay. Um, well, this just takes sorry. about the up meetings with the CID and the Old National Merchant Association. They have moved virtually um, and information is typically for the board, but can be sent out once um, once the meetings are public. Next slide. Thank you. So, <laughs> for our Madam Chair, I did want to announce from our last meeting, um, we had discussed the nominations of Business of the Year and gave our um, community more time to vote. So they were able to select their 2020 Businesses of the Year. As far as for the Business of the Year for Maine and Virginia, Bola Ethiopian was selected for the Old National and Southside Corridor. It was Creative Styles Barbershop. The Legacy Award winner is Ray Coleman of State Farm on Main Street, um, as well as special recognition went to Club E located on Main Street. And the Best New Business Person of the Year is one of our Main Street Association board members, Ms. Christy Dean of Drip Through. I did go um, on Monday with Madam Chair to um, provide a celebratory um, form to one of our businesses, but we will be completing that shortly with our Main Street manager, Ms. Coakley, and then we will be providing that information on city social medias. As far as the businesses have received their advertising here at City Hall, as well as the G, uh, GICC, and that will be completed tomorrow, but we really have heard good things from our winners um, who were excited to get the surprise of the free advertising and of the acknowledgement. Okay. Next slide. All right, so that wraps up my report. Um, before I end, I do want to um, acknowledge as far as Nicolette, um, the city planners are working on a are updating the comprehensive plan with the city. Um, they are requesting a representative from each uh, body or entity as far as uh, planning, zoning, and the development authority. So I'll let Nikki speak on that and then we can um, add that nomination in, I guess, within next month item. Tasha. Yeah. So, so real quick, uh, just the comprehensive plan update is uh, we have to do it every five years. So we're up. The last update was in 2016. So this will be our update for 2021. And um, as you guys know, it's an update to the future land use map and kind of our future policy for what we want to see the city um, turn into. So 6 West will of course be a big part of that during this comprehensive plan. Um, and of course all the development in the city. So we would love to have a BIDA representative on the steering committee for the comprehensive plan. Um, so it'd be great if, if you guys can think about it and, and nominate somebody, um, we can get them, get them on, on the steering committee. And, and basically what that is, is we'll have three or four meetings and the commitment is just, you know, outreach to the community, letting them know what's going on, and then input from you. You know, what do you think the city wants? Um, how do you envision our policy for the upcoming years? And uh, also, you know, your expertise of, of being a citizen and a community leader here in College Park. So that's the gist. If you have any questions, um, also feel free to email me about it if you are interested in representing BIDA for that. And right. Yes, Vice Chair Taylor, you were asking a question. Yes, um, I wanted to make sure that the that the merchants who are part of the discount mall, I noticed that instead of being inside, that they are um, selling their items and stuff outside of their in their trunks and stuff in the parking garage. They're okay with that, and they didn't have to worry about having permits or anything to be outside of the mall. No, they actually were advised against selling outside of the mall. Unfortunately, um, this has created an issue for some of the vendors and they have decided to go against the stated ordinances, but um, that that is not allowable. Per, uh, peddlers are not allowed without permit in the city. Mm, okay. I, 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 okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. All right. If that's all, then I'll pass it over to Artie. Thank you, Tasha and Nikki. Thank you, Tasha. As for the director's report, it's very short. Uh, 3907 Main Street Enterprise Rental Car Facility, as was mentioned by Steve Ackerman, um, Steve Lincoln of Ackerman. Um, this piece of property has closed. There will be a, a, a new restaurant slash travel plaza located at this particular location. Also, we are awaiting um, to get results from the, ground, the Brownsville grant that was submitted. Also, um, keep your eyes uh, peeled. Um, there's a new traffic signal will be going on going in at Rose, uh, at, um, the intersection of Rose Street and Camp Creek. That's across the street from the racetrack gas station. Also, we are waiting to um, start um, discussions with the Fulton County Department, uh, Fulton County uh, Board of Education on our tax allocation district application that was submitted. Um, on the 30th of December, um, the, the budget for the budget season for the school system will start February 1. And, as, and the latest is uh, we do now have a project manager uh, for the 6th West um, development. It's BDR. Uh, they're the same uh, group that project managed uh, for us for the, uh, the development of the Gateway Arena. Are there any questions? Thank you. That's it, Artie? <laughs> that was short. Also, I'd like to thank everyone. We've gotten several calls from uh, individuals around the city making us aware of the damage to the, uh, the GIC sign. But um, we will get it repaired as quickly as possible. But thanks for everyone for reaching out, watching out for, you know, buy the property. All right. Thank you, Artie. All right. Thank you. Other issues? Hearing none, um, may I have a motion to exit regular session to enter into executive session to discuss real estate and possible litigation? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you all. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carry. Thank you. All right.